Hello and welcome to another Quizzer Sisters quiz with me, Jane, and my lovely sister, Lucy. That'll be me. You know, that'll be you. <laughs> Evening, Jane. Is that question one? Have I passed? Have I done it already? No hesitation, no deviation. One, oh, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a different kind of quiz. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's you, you've passed. You've passed. Oh. How are you? Been anywhere interesting in the last week? Been on holiday? <laughs> I went to the front, I went to the front garden, which is uh, which is news. Yeah, mostly I've been pottering around in the back garden. So yeah, that was that was exotic. You? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ventured into the background and actually mowed the lawn. Yeah, I know. Just it's just non-stop fun, fun, fun here. <laughs> With that and writing questions. Have a guess how many questions we're writing at the moment every month. Um 800. 1,169. And that's writing, verifying, editing, formatting, and uh, actually getting out there producing them and delivering them so it's just enormous so I've had no sleep you see big bags on the bars <laughs> I'm trying to do all these quizzes so wow how so there you go how many quizzes is that for how many yeah. that's for we're doing four quizzes a week and um, I'm helping a couple of other people out as well but most of those almost all of those are in our quizzes every week um, so we're doing quiz assisters on Wednesday Sean's quiz on Friday I do a tough team quiz on Sunday and on Saturday my, my company usually does a quiz um, every month anyway so we're, we're doing those at the moment so this weekend's one is the UK Grand Prix so that's 240 question quiz so there you go massive massive load of work going on so um yeah jolly jolly d so we'll get told off talking too much again Lisa. so let's get on with those rules shall we before we start the questions do it okay this quiz has 40 questions split across four rounds. You get one point for each question. And one of the rounds, round three, is a picture round. All the questions are in English. We have emboldened bits to help anybody if English isn't your first language. We ask you, please, please, please don't cheat. There's no prizes. There's absolutely no reason for cheating at all. And if you really have to cheat, just cheat yourself and don't put your scores in at the end. And please don't post the answers anywhere because people are playing along and don't want to see the answers. Um, and this quiz will be left up on YouTube forever and ever and people still won't want to see the answers. So please don't do that. Um, and Lucy and I will be on uh, Facebook and Twitter after the quiz. So come and have a chat with us. Yeah, it's always nice to see how you got on and find out how everyone's week's been and yeah, hear, hear how your scores went and questions that stumped you that you're as I would be sitting at home going, oh, so, yeah, yeah have a chat. And we're building up a really nice following. So we've got uh, lots of lovely people coming in to chat to us, and that's really fabulous. So thank you very much for that. Um, and so, shall we get on with the quiz, Luce? What do you think? Yes, that's what I'm here for. Okay, you ready? Yes, go. Let's get going with question number one. First appearing in print in the 1880s, which fictional character's nose grows every time he tells a lie? Who could that be? Well, the picture gives it away. Nice, easy one to start with. Yeah, yes. easy, easy. Do you know, I was just going to put a picture of just the bit of him that grows. And when I did that, <laughs> I suddenly realised that that might not be such a great idea. <laughs> Yes, with the other characters stood on the end. On the end of it, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> that's, that's what okay. Question number two. In the currency of the USA, a dime is worth how many cents? So how many cents in a dime? Mm -hmm. Is it dimes that are copper? Uh, yeah, they've got copper in the middle of them, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, question number three. Oh, I should be in Australia at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But in which state or territory of Australia is Uluru located? Or Ayers Rock, if you prefer. But which state or territory? 
It's a really nice picture, lots of bright colours and... I know, it's beautiful. Mm. Okay, number four. The Kandar is a symbol of which major world religion? Know that one? Um, I'd make a decent guess at it, I think. Which is all pub quiz is all about, right? Yeah, exactly. Toss a coin. If you don't know, it's a choice between two. Toss a coin. Toss, toss a copper cent. Yes. <laughs> okay, number five. Joaquin Phoenix and Heath Ledger have both won Academy Awards for playing which comic book villain? Oh, Heath Ledger. Mm, it's tragic. Yeah. I have yet to see Joaquin Phoenix's version of, of his film. I haven't seen that yet. Have you? I watched about two thirds of it and then I have to say I got a little bored of it. Turned it off. Don't tell, don't tell the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number six. We've got something a bit different for you. In number six, we've got a diploid. Did you know that's what these things are called? Diploids. diploids. Um, so here's our one. Seven C in an R. So what is that if you write it out in full? Seven C in an R. Yeah, different kind of word puzzle, which is... Mm -hmm. Phrases, quotations, dates, facts that you can gather from just the abbreviation of letters and numbers. We like to mix it up a bit. Yeah. And we've given you an extra clue to give, tell you something a bit more about the realm. Yeah. We used to do that in our pop quizzes. You just used to get randoms. Okay, okay. Should we go on to number seven? Yep. Okay, with the code PEK, Asia's busiest airport in terms of passenger numbers serves which city? So PEK, that's the airport code for which city in Asia? Mm. A bit trickier? A bit trickier, yeah. All questions are easy if you know them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And number eight, the original title of the Victor Hugo novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, references which city that is the main setting of the story? So which city is the Hunchback of Notre Dame set in? And number nine, Okay, at the 2008, 2012 and 2016 Olympics, the sprinter Usain Bolt won the men's 100 metre race and which other individual event? Is I, a, I saw him do it in 2012. Yeah, <laughs> he's a fabulous ambassador for sport. Any sport would be happy to have him as a... I know. Involved. Like, I got given tickets, one for me and one for my son, to go to the Olympics in 2012 in London. And uh, I had no idea who was doing anything there. And suddenly Usain Bolt rocked up. It's the most exciting thing ever. Yeah. I've got a fabulous photo of my son's face when he saw, yeah, when he saw Usain Bolt. Absolutely phenomenal day. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now number 10. Prior to the revolt against ancient Rome that Spartacus led, he held what dangerous occupation? So what was Spartacus before he led the revolt against the ancient Rome? I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. <laughs> this is a good educational history question there. Yeah. Okay, shall we do a quick round up then? Yeah. Okay. So, number one, first appearing in print in the 1880s, which fictional character's nose grows every time he tells a lie? And number two, in the currency of the USA, a dime is worth how many cents? Number three, in which state or territory of Australia is Uluru located? Number four, the Kandar is a symbol of which major world religion? 
Number five, Joachim Phoenix and Heath Ledger have both won Academy Awards playing which comic book villain? Number six, that's your diploid question. Seven C in an R. Number seven, uh, with the airport code PEK, Asia's busiest airport in terms of passenger numbers serves which city? Number eight, the original title of the Victor Hugo novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, references which city that is the main setting of the story? Number nine, um, at the 2008, 12 and 16 Olympics, Usain Bolt won the men's 100 metre race and which other individual event? Number 10, prior to the revolt against ancient Rome that Spartacus led, he had what dangerous occupation? Okay, should we give those answers then? Ready? Number one. That's Pinocchio. Yeah. Do you have to spell it right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a test of spelling. As long as you've got something that roughly sounds like it's going to be Pinocchio, that's fine. Number two. There are 10 cents in a dime. Not 50 cents. No. <laughs> Number three. Uh, that's in Northern Territory. Uluru is in the Northern Territory. And number four, that's the Sikhs. It's a symbol of Sikhism. And number five, those two men both played the Joker. Okay, now for number six, that Ditloid, seven colours in a rainbow. Now, I am looking forward to getting lots of people writing into me to say, actually, there's an infinite number of colours in a rainbow. Yes, there are, but... Uh, for the purposes of this, we are having seven colours in a rainbow, which are the seven identified by Isaac Newton. That's why we, we have those seven. So there you are. You've learnt something else. Homeschooling right here. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, that airport is uh, in Beijing, um, which was a city previously called Peking, hence P-E-K. OK. Number eight, the Hunchback of Notre Dame is in Paris. And number nine, Usain Bolt won the 200 metres. We asked for the individual competition, so the relay doesn't count. It's 200 metres we were looking for. And then number 10, Spartacus, he was a gladiator. They should bring that back to TV as well. Gladiator. Yeah. Exactly. Not, you, you could use the massive cotton buds for di social yeah. distancing. I always wanted to be jet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get on with round two um, and see how you do with that. We'll tell you how to put your scores in shortly. Um, so round two, a 1772 painting by George Stubbs called Portrait of a Large Dog depicts what kind of wild dog that is native to Australia? Can you tell I was thinking about being in Australia? Oh, I only meant to be at a wedding now. I was meant to be at a wedding that got cancelled and I also, um, so here's another fascinating fact for everybody, um, if you watch a show over here called Child Genius in the UK, they have an on-screen adjudicator in the Australian version, I am that uh, oh, yeah, I am that adjudicator. I don't know which side, Lisa, but either side, whatever. <laughs> so I, I should be in Australia. Hey ho, next year. Australia's okay. loss. Question number two. In a game of Cluedo, or for our American friends, Clue, which character always goes first if all six characters are being used? So in Cluedo, which character goes first if all six characters are being used? We really want the character's name as well, not just the colour. That's That would be a bit too easy. Character's name. I've played Cluedo for years. No, me neither. And number three. Let's go on to number three. The music duo, the Carters, are made up of Beyonce Knowles and her husband, Sean Carter, who performs using what stage name? So what is Sean Carter's stage name? You're all cool, Liz. You'll know this one. <laughs> I've already got my 50 cents in, right? Yep, you have. Very good, very good. And number four, let's have a look at number four. What two-word nickname is popularly given to the Santa Clara Valley, south of 
San Francisco, reflecting the fact that it is home to a number of high-tech innovation and social media companies. So we want the two-word nickname of the Santa Clara Valley, the bit of it that's just south of uh, San Francisco. Okay, number five. What is the first name of Mr. Darcy in the novel Pride and Prejudice? You appreciating the photo I put in there? It's very nice. You could have chosen one without a shirt on, though. Well, I was going to, but then I thought, well, you know, it's maybe sexist. Easy. Somebody will, will yeah. complain. But I, I nonetheless managed to find a nice photo of, of Mr. Firth there. <laughs> yeah, very nice. His first name isn't Ooh, by the way. Isn't it? Are you no. sure it's not? <laughs> and number six, which mountain, the highest in Greece, was the home to Zeus, Hera, Athena, and the other main Greek gods? So which mountain in Greece was meant to be their home? I enjoy the way you say Zeus. 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 Yeah. That's good. I'm practising. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number seven. In The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, what is the name of the region of Middle Earth where the hobbits live? I like that picture because he looks like he's trying to escape like we all are. Look, he's got a backpack on and he's kind of going for it. <laughs> stay home, Mr. Hobbit, stay yeah. safe. Naughty boy. <laughs> but he was doing exactly what I'm feeling. <laughs> Okay, number eight. The maxilla and the mandible are together known as the upper and lower bones of what part of the human body? So the maxilla and the mandible. Okay, number nine. Which historical region in, the, in central Romania is associated with Count Dracula? So historical region in central Romania. You're doing pretty well on this round. Sorry? You're doing pretty well on this round. Oh, very good, very good. See how you do with question 10 then. Go for it. Let's see. Oh, do no. By a team at CompuServe in the 1980s. What does the G stand for in the acronym GIF? G I F, GIF. What does the G stand for? CompuServe, are they still going, I wonder? They were the big, yeah. them and AOL were the two biggies, weren't they, back yeah. in the day? I don't know. Don't Our think so. now, it's giving away our ages. Move on, move on. Jules would know. I bet he's shouting us behind the scenes. <laughs> I've got to <laughs> Okay, let's do the roundup. Okay, a 1772 painting by George Stubbs called Portrait of a Large Dog depicts what kind of wild dog that's native to Australia? Number two, in the game of Cluedo, which character always goes first if all six characters are being used? Number three, the music duo The Carters are made up of Beyonce Knowles and Sean Carter, um, who performs under what stage name? So what is Sean Carter's stage name? Number four, what is the two-word nickname given to the Santa Clara Valley south of San Francisco? Number five, what is the first name of Mr. Darcy in the novel Pride and Prejudice? Okay, number six. Which mountain, the highest in Greece, was the home of Zeus, Hera, Athena, and the Ma uh, and other main Greek gods? Number seven. In The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, what is the name of the region of Middle Earth where the hobbits live? Number eight. The maxilla and the mandible are together known as the upper and lower bones of which part of the body? Number nine, which historical region in central Romania is associated with Count Dracula? And number 10, developed by a team at CompuServe in the 1980s, what does the G stand for in the acronym GIF? Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we do those answers? Okay, number one, that painting um, of the wild dog, that's a dingo. And number two, 
the character that always goes first is Miss Scarlet. Mm. And ladies, ladies first. Ladies first. And you can have Cassandra Scarlet because they tried to update it with all new character names and that's what they decided to call her. Okay. And number three, uh, Sean Carter is Jay-Z. Number four, that two-word nickname for that uh, valley is Silicon Valley. And number five, the dreamy Mr. Darcy is Fitzwilliam Darcy. Didn't know that. No, well, there you go. See, it's quite cultured this round, actually. I think, you know, George Stubbs paintings and all sorts of things. Number six, that mountain in Greece where all the gods lived is Mount Olympus. And the hobbits, where did they live? They lived in the Shire. And the maxilla and the mandible, those are your jaw bones. So jaw is what we need there. And number nine, the region in Romania is Transylvania. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> and then the CompuServe team um, developed the GIF, and that is graphics. The G stands for graphics. So there you go. Top your scores up, and we will tell you how to put them into our scoring system at the end of the quiz. Okay. Round three. So round three is our picture round. Um, and so this time we have got pictures of celebrities and we have uh, made it so you can only see their eyes. So how many of these can you recognise just their eyes? OK, first. So I've given it away with me like that. <laughs> I think you're definitely number one then. Yeah. I'm almost certainly number five. <laughs> <laughs> yes so some of them they're from all sorts of time periods as well most of you know some modern some not so modern I was having an interesting chat today about eyebrows and how one of my friends is worried because her eyebrows now aren't as sculpted as they she would like them to be because she can't get to her lady that does it disaster actually there's quite a few Defined eyebrows there that might be a little more hair and scare in these days. Yeah. Yeah. As, a, as a blondie, I don't have eyebrows. It's no, as a redhead, I don't either. No. no. And I also don't have roots to grow through either. <laughs> this is my hair colour. <laughs> and long straight hair, no one will notice if I don't get it cut for a year. <laughs> no. Okay, so we have a look at the next lot of pictures then. Ooh, slightly narrower some of those. Do you recognise any of those people? <laughs> yeah, one of them might be in the press quite a lot at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw a week. A couple of articles of uh, one of them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, more than one of them, obviously, another one of them is in the press quite a lot. Yeah. Okay, should we go back onto the first screen so you can have a little look at those again? Yeah. Oh. Which does look a lot like me. <laughs> Is that not you? No. But if I if I hold up a couple of pieces of paper on my face, you might not be able to you might think use it. Tell the difference. See? Oh yeah. I'm number five. I'm practically number five. Practically identical. <laughs> okay, let's go back onto the other slide, give you a minute or so having another look at those, and then I shall give you the answers. See how many you knew. Number seven could almost be upside down. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm going to have to look at the answer myself to remember who that is. <laughs> That is, I think that's probably the hardest one of all of them. Ah, there's clues in there. Yeah. Okay, I think that's probably enough time. Let's go yeah. give you the answers. Let's show you who, who those people were. Okay, so number one, so that is Twiggy. Oh. Yeah, I put that in for our mum because she'll have got that one. <laughs> number two, that is Angelina Jolie. And number three, that is Cara Delevingne. Number four is Will Smith. And number five is not me, that is Ed Sheeran. <laughs> okay, 
And on to the next slide, let's have a look at who those were. Oh, now you see he was quite easy, number six, because his eyes aren't the same colour as the rest of him. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump. Has he bleached them? <laughs> Maybe he has bleached them. He's bleached his hair as well. <laughs> Don't put bleach in your eyes or your face or your mouth. Well, do not suggest it. <laughs> And number seven, that is the beautiful Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And number eight, I think this is the toughest of all of them, that is Rihanna. Or you can have Robin Fenty if you prefer. And number nine, be big trouble if you don't get this one, that is our lovely Sean Williamson. And number 10, Muhammad Ali. Or Cassius Clay if you prefer. Well, I think he was probably Muhammad Ali by the time that one was taken. Did you, did you see Sean in the press yesterday for missing out on... Glastonbury and it's I like, tops love the Glastonbury. Sorry for the K watchers, but yeah. Sean, Sean was in the, the tabloid. Sean is a hell of a singer. A hell of a singer. After yeah. this quiz, if you've not heard him sing, Google Sean Williamson singing. He does the most fabulous Labby Siffrey. Um he's he's really amazing. Do do go and have a look. You'll be quite surprised, I think. Anyway, right, let's get on with round four. The last round. Yep, on the home straight, everyone. Okay, round four, question number one. What is this sweet laden party favourite called? So what's that called? You fill them with sweets and you bash them until all the sweets fall out. You have to be blindfolded, so it's quite a lot of fun. Maybe that's what I need to make it slightly more tricky to get at the snack cupboard. <laughs> I need one of these to actually physical exertion to get to the snacks. Our, our snack cupboard is completely empty. It's <laughs> devoid of all snacks. <laughs> and number two. Okay, what is the best known name of the river that's sacred to Hindus that rises in the Himalayas, flows through Bangladesh and India before splitting into two rivers in West Bengal? So what is the name of this river? It's the sacred river for Hindus. This is quite an educational quiz, this one, I think. There's a lot of highbrow stuff in here. Yeah, it's it's started with Pinocchio. And then, yeah. and then it has progressed on to George Starks. And yeah, I'll wait till you see the next one. Here you are. So number three, see, there you go. In which Shakespeare play would you see the title character hold up a skull and say, alas, poor Yorick? I don't have a skull, but I could hold up my basketball. Or a mini basketball. Stressful. Yes. Okay, number four. The adjective renal relates to which pair of organs in the human body? So renal, which pair of organs? See, now we're into human body. Oh, yeah, goodness me. You've outdone yourself this week, Jane. I know, I know. Well, we'll see when the scores come in. <laughs> Number five. The shirts of the home kits of the national football teams of Russia, Belgium, Portugal and Spain are all predominantly which primary colour? So those teams, what um, are their uh, tip? Those teams, what are their shirt colours mostly? Primary colour. Mm. Okay, question six. The Swiss Guard are the official bodyguards of the person who holds which position? So the Swiss Guard, whose bodyguards are they? Great outfits, aren't Fabulous, they? Fabulous, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's claimed that they were designed by Michelangelo, but I, and I loved that. And then I researched it and discovered that that wasn't true. So oh. I wish I hadn't researched that because I really liked that <laughs> Michelangelo might have designed those uniforms. OK, number seven. The music styles Mento, Rocksteady, Ska and Reggae all originated in which Caribbean island country?
Okay. And then number eight, from the ancient Greek for vapor and all, what is the name given to the layer of gases that surround a planet? From the ancient Greek for vapor and all, what is the name given to the layer of gases that surround a planet? So now we're into ancient Greek. Yeah. Word derivation. Come on, this is great. Yeah. I know this is a whole school lesson right here. This it's a good question. question, this one. I like it. Yeah, it is. It's an even better answer. <laughs> and number nine. Who unseated Bill Gates at the top of the Forbes World Billionaires list in 2018? Not looking smug about it at all in that photo. Either. No, no. And I understand, having read something today, that his business is one of the big winners at the moment. So mm. he'll be looking even smug shortly. Mm. Okay, and then on to number 10. And I just put number 10's picture in here just to remind us all of when we were allowed to go on holidays, really. But mm. by area. Which is the largest island in the Caribbean? So by area, which is the largest island in the Caribbean? Now, do you hold store to the fact that's fact that allegedly once you've been to the Caribbean, you call it the Caribbean? The Caribbean. I think that might be an American pronunciation. I've never heard anybody in the UK call it the Caribbean, but I have heard lots of Americans call it that. Yeah, I, I was told if you've been to the Caribbean, you would call it the Caribbean. Oh, well, I've been a few times. I Oops. still call it the Caribbean. I must have missed that memo. <laughs> <laughs> Memo. Yes. OK, let's give you those um, those questions again quickly. So number one, what is that sweet laden party favourite called? Number two, what is the best known name of the river that's sacred to the Hindus? Number three, in which Shakespeare play would you see the title character hold up a skull and say, alas, poor Yorick? Number four, the adjective renal relates to which pair of organs in the human body? Number five, the shirts of the home kits of the national football teams of Russia, Belgium, Portugal and Spain are all predominantly which colour? And number six, the Swiss Guard, they're the official bodyguards to whom? Number seven, the music styles Mento, Rocksteady, Ska and Reggae are all originated in which Caribbean island country? Number eight, from the ancient Greek for vapour and ball, what is the name given to the layer of gases that surround a planet? Number nine, who unseated Bill Gates at the top of the Forbes World Billionaires list in 2018? And finally, back to the Caribbean or Caribbean, which is the largest island? In the Caribbean. Okay. I've got a great story to tell you about the answer to one of these. I'll bore you with that in a bit. <laughs> okay, oh, those answers. Number one, um, that sweet laden treat is the pinata. Number two, the holy river for Hindus is the Ganges. And number three, alas for Yorick, that's in Hamlet. And number four, renal relates to the kidneys. Number five, the colour of those shirts is red. And then number six, those bodyguards are bodyguards to the Pope. Number seven, um, reggae, ska, rock, steady, mento, they all um, come from Jamaica. And I went to Jamaica one time, and the reason I was there was because a friend of a friend had a sick rabbit and needed it looked after while she went to visit her parents and asked if anybody was available to go to Jamaica to look after her rabbit. I was there like a shot. <laughs> How did the rabbit do? Could, could have been better. <laughs> It was, actually, it was actually so sick that the vet who was showing me what needed to be done to the rabbit said, you know what, actually, I'm just going to take the rabbit and look after it. So I didn't actually look after the rabbit at all. Poor little bunny. But there we are. OK, number eight. So vapour and ball is atmosphere. So you got sphere there. Um, that's uh, that's where that comes from. Number nine. Um, that is Jeff. 
Bezos. Uh, so he is the founder of Amazon. And number 10, the largest um, island in the Caribbean is Cuba. So there you go. That's the end of the quiz. How did you do? Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was a little bit more highbrow than we have done in the past, but hey, got to mix these things up, haven't you, Lucy? Yeah, absolutely. It's good to good to know, learn a few things. That's always yes. part of a pub quiz, I think. Exactly, exactly. So now um, don't forget to put your scores in. To do that, you register at quest.quizzing.com um, and then uh, you will see how to put your scores in. Uh, we hope we will see you next week. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, yes. Sean is going to do a very much better job than we do on Friday, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> well, he'll do his best, bless him. You know, got to got to humour him. He'll, he'll he's do got his best. to step his jacket game up, or he's never never going to stand a chance. I haven't asked him if he's got a shiny jacket. I, I'll ask him. Um, but so he will be here on Friday. The UK uh, Grand Prix quiz um, is available on Saturday, and there is a tough team quiz on Sunday. That's also on YouTube. Um, so hope you can join us for some or all of those. And if not, we will see you next Wednesday at eight o'clock. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a safe and happy week and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Well, bye, bye. Bye. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. bye.